super cool thing happened today, which is just, it's weird to, to conceptualize. Um, I don't know if you've been following along. Voyager one is way the hell out in, of the solar system. It is, it is now effectively the, I think, the Star Trek one. No, the real one. The Voyager. Oh, one. I it's, didn't know. I didn't know there was a real one. <laughs> <laughs> the comments this week. That's going to be magic. That's terrible. <clears throat> it is something like 15 billion miles away from Earth. It's one of the farthest objects we've ever put out into the universe. And it's from the 70s, and it's breaking the hell down, slowly but surely. Um, Same. <laughs> and they... I am also from the 70s and breaking the hell down. <laughs> Didn't have to leave Earth to do that. They thought it was permanently borked and it wouldn't be sending back any more data because one of the, the components started dying and it couldn't. What these engineers at NASA managed to do with a lag time of 22 hours radio communication with this device over radio, by the way, they managed to rewrite the instruction codes for the Voyager probe to stop using the broken chip and to repurpose a bunch of other chips to take over the, just, they figured out ways to spread out the, 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 uh, the, the, the information, the, the load for it to do the other things. And now it's talking again. They just taught it how to reprogram itself. Well, they came, they, they rewrote its, uh, its instruction code and said, all right, don't use that chip anymore. Instead, take this thing and shove it over here. And this show, this stuff still works. So use this. That's impressive. Like this thing is running on rubber bands and grape soda, right? And they're same <laughs> and it's still going, but I've got a phone from five years ago that apparently they can't <laughs> write an Android update for. Right? Like crap. I, just... I changed my Wi-Fi password. My printer doesn't work anymore. <laughs> I put the new password in. Doesn't work. I don't know. I just, I, I find that that was just fascinating me. This, this thing is like, it's 15 billion miles away. Radio takes a full day to reach it. And they're like, yeah, we reprogrammed that. Tootsie Fruitsie. That's a, that's a, people are freaking that hardcore. Is, that is pretty cool. That is pretty cool. As long as you have not read and or watched three body problem. <laughs> <sighs> All right. It's well, pretty cool either way. It's just a little scarier if you have read and or watched the thing. I do know the plot. I have not watched it yet, but I did look up the plot. I will get around to it at some point. Looking forward to dead boy detective this week though. I just started the book and apparently they changed massive things from the book to the show, but book fans seem to be okay with the changes. Like the overall theme and everything is apparently the same. So. All right. Well, I am excited for dead boy detectives as well. Yeah. Okay. So let's get to things we are less excited about. This week is not quite, it's not really terrible. But God, is it dumb? Just you want th this is this is one of those you want to slap somebody kind of weeks. You know, you're just like, why, 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 why are you like that? All right, let's get the intro going. Each week, Catherine, the Radio Dead Air audience, go out in the worldwide interwebs. Find all sorts of horrible stuff and bring it back here for a little segment we like to call What the Fuck is Wrong with You? Now, we're going to start this week. Is th this is, I guess, I don't know if you call it like a misnomer or an urban myth or something. I don't know if you remember when we were young, this thing that I, it mostly came from fiction. The idea that if you got bitten by a venomous snake, you abs you had to have that venomous snake available to make the anti venom or at least identify it because apparently anti venoms only work with specific venoms and blah blah blah. So is uh, that not true? Kinda, but we've gotten better. 
But at the time, like, okay. like tell it's like the quicksand thing, you know, like how to survive quicksand. It's like this got instilled into people. Well, it's not exactly how that works. For example, the hospitals are officially begging people to stop bringing snakes to the emergency room. I mean, is the snake sick? No. Oh. This is from Australia, of all places. Uh, snake bite victims are endangering medical staff by bringing the reptiles with them to the hospital. In Queensland's Wide Bay region, doctors have come face to face with some of the most venomous snakes captured by patients believing it'll help with identification and treatment. One case earlier this month, emergency staff at a uh, Bundaberg hospital four miles north of Brisbane were handed a plastic food container with a small eastern brown snake peering back at them. They got a picture of him there, too. Look at him, little guy. Uh, the incident prompted the hospital's director of emergency medicine, I, Adam Michael, to warn patient, patients to leave the snakes alone. We don't want people interacting with the snakes any more than they already have. Any attempt to either get close to a snake or catch or kill or photograph the snake just puts people at risk. Uh, the Eastern Brown brought it earlier this month was not very well secured and was wiggling around trying to get out. The staff got a fright and the serious consequence of that is it delays people's time for treatment. Um Snake identity not needed for treatment. There are about 3,000 suspected snake bite venoms across Australia each year, but only 100 to 200 cases require antivenom. On uh, the Wide Bay region alone, almost 100 people aged as young as one have been treated for snake bites. Um, if a snake, let's see, uh, we can determine if you need antivenom, and if so, what antivenom you need based on clinical signs, blood tests, and also the snake venom detection kits that we keep here at the hospital. We're naturally not trained to identify snakes, which is the funniest part. It's like the idea of like, you bring it to the doctor, the doctor will go, cool, blimey. That's a southern. I, mean, I was going to say, alternately, you could just take a picture. But don't even do that. But yeah, like if they don't, if they don't know every breed of snake, that's not really going to help either. That's a southern wide mouth purple chrome cobra. If the venomous snake has already bitten you, yeah, why are you continuing to fuck with it? Well, you're trying. I guess it's it's a stupid idea that you need the snake because if you don't, they won't be able to save your life, which is so stupid. But also, if you continue to fuck with the snake, it's going it to bite you again. You. again. Infinite more times, yeah. which will also not save your life. No, that'll make it worse. That will make it worse. It's, it's it's contrary to popular belief, getting bit by a snake multiple times, that's more venom. That's more poison. Yeah. That's less chance you will live. It's not like chicken pox where you get it once and then <laughs> you're pretty much good. Like the first one, all the others do still count. That's that's another stupid. Like they they didn't know for sure that I got bit by a brown recluse, but they were like, "It sure as hell looks like you did." Mm -hmm. We're just gonna act like you did. They didn't send me to my sister's house to hunt down a spider this big <laughs> and fuck with it some more. Just just bringing with some of the most deadly, and this is Australia, so these are the deadliest snakes in the entire fucking world, and they're bringing it to the emergency room. It's the land of do not touch. <laughs> like, I don't even think you should pet your dog in Australia. Because you just can't be sure. That it's not a dingo uh, wearing your dog as a suit. Uh, well, let's move on along to Florida. And this is, this is one of those stories where it's so dumb, Tara. They're so, oh my God, they're so fucking stupid. I, you almost don't want them to get arrested. It's like arresting a toddler. But at the same time, oh my God, you idiots. Florida couple caught taping crude looking lottery ticket together to claim $1 million prize. 
Florida you couple. Check those, you know. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Florida couple allegedly tried to pull a fast one on lottery officials when they taped together a scratch off ticket and passed it off as a $1 million winner. Spoiler alert, it didn't work. According to an affidavit, 36 year old Kira Lee Enders on March 1st went to the Florida Lottery Pensacola's office, claimed she won $1 million from the 500X The Cash scratch off ticket. Um, the ticket had obvious alterations and is crudely pieced together from two separate actual scratch off tickets. Deputies alleged that Enders ripped the two tickets, which were non winners, and put them together to make it look like she had a winning ticket. She wrote her full name and address on the ticket and signed it under the penalty of perjury. It's like a toddler. It's, it's really like they don't understand how badly you're breaking the law here. Yeah, like the lottery one is gambling. Yeah. So it's regulated by the gaming commission. Oh, yeah. But also a lot of lotteries are run by the state. Yeah. Like you'll notice it's called the New York State Lottery, the such and such lot. Like, and that means it's run by the state as and they use those funds for public works. But um detectives then asked how she, the ticket got ripped, and she claimed it had gotten wet in the rain, and she tried to scratch scratch it off before it was dry, causing it to tear. She allegedly stated she taped the ticket together herself. The detectives then confronted her with the truth that the ticket allegedly was a non-winning ticket made to a winning ticket. This quote, this fucking quote. What, they don't go together, she reportedly said? Enders continued to insist that the two pieces of the ticket went together and she did not intentionally commit any fraud because doing so, quote, would be dumb, and that's how you go to jail. Well, yes. <sighs> you are correct. That is, that, that yes, you, you were, you, you do grasp the situation. You're arrested on. Which is almost worse, isn't it? Yeah. It's almost worse. They're arrested Thursday on charges of forging, altering of a lottery ticket with intended fraud and grand theft in the first degree of $100,000 or more. They have a court date scheduled for May 10th. Good. You. It. I guess that's the first thing you come to realize. You join like the FBI or something like that. There aren't no Moriarty's. There aren't any. It's, it's not like that. No. It's, it's, and that must be really disappointing for a lot of people. Right? You're you're not going to be there trying to track down like Hannibal or some shit. No. It's just it's just a bunch of doofuses. Yeah. It's like it's Dunning Kruger all the way down. Good God Almighty! Even real serial killers aren't like the serial killers in the no. movies. No, they're mostly just lucky and scary but also kind of dumb. Yeah, but not like master. They're not Hannibal Lecter-esque no, no, masterminds. No. They just kind of fly under the radar until yeah. they don't. Until they don't. We've got more. Good God. This is not the first time it's happened, but Jesus Christ. It happened again. Let's go with it happened again. <sighs> Sweetie, honey, why would you... Woman called cops over bad batch of meth. <sighs> An Indiana woman is facing narcotics charge after she called 911 to report purchasing an inferior batch of methamphetamine, saying she wanted to file charges against her drug dealer. Did asking for his manager not work? <laughs> Sarah Harris, 34, twice made open line calls to the police emergency number, which prompted an officer to visit her residence to ensure that everyone was okay. During a conversation with police captain, Harris declared that her meth was, quote, not what it was supposed to be. Never is, is it? Um, 
She explained the drug had left her feeling as if she was going to have a heart attack. Harris said she had snorted a line of the meth and felt something different when it touched her skin and nostrils. Harris noted she and her friend I mean, had... Isn't that what meth is supposed to do? I mean, I thought. Um, her friend had smoked a, nor a bowl of normal meth before she subsequently obtained the meth that led to her 911 call 911 earlier this year. Apparently believing the local sheriff operated a better illegal business bureau, Harris uh, requested the drug be tested. Harris also declared that she wanted to, quote, turn the person in who provided her the meth. I don't know if you quite understand exactly how freaking dangerous what you have just proposed is to do. See, yeah. the, the whole thing about a criminal enterprise is you do talk to the police. They tend to be run by criminals. Uh, while speaking with the police at Look her Look at home, her little baby face. Yeah. She's 34, say, though. For she... someone that apparently does a lot of meth, her skin looks amazing. <laughs> while speaking with police at her home, Harris made the mistake of handing over the meth that so vexed her, the contents of the small baggie, which carried a red pig design. Adorable, it has branding. Later, field tested positive for methamphetamine. As a result of Harris providing the narcotics evidence, criminal information charged her with meth possession. It was filed last week. Fast six fel felony requires a maximum of 30 month prison term. The advisory sentence is one year. Sweetie. And this is, it, this is like, oh, she's never been arrested before. No, no, no. Her rap sheet includes convictions for theft, meth possession, criminal mischief, disorderly conduct, resisting, and operating a motor vehicle while intoxicated. You have had extensive contact with law enforcement. How Somebody did... in the chat says they know her. What? Shut up. Shut up. <laughs> I mean, it was bound to happen eventually, I guess, but I'm kind of surprised it took this long. <laughs> but this you've had. It, you know how the laws, you know how it works. Like, You've been convicted of meth possession meth before. Possession. Honey. It's still not legal, babe. Like Jesus Christ. Even if you got inferior shit, you're still not allowed to have it. She used to live with you. Oh God. Well, I'm glad you don't live there anymore. <laughs> it doesn't sound like a great situation. Oh, Jesus. Now I will Christ. say, I do not love that we make having drugs a crime mm. because addiction is a thing true and like i don't i don't love that we have criminalized having drugs i think selling drugs making drugs sure because you're doing harm to other people but i don't love like that's just a way to fill up prisons to me yeah. instead of getting people in treatment yeah I will say me me. meth is, is one that concerns me just because of the nature of how it's put together. Yeah. Because that shit. And the like, shit we've seen it make people do. Yeah. But in general, I feel like the, the, the penalty for possession should be a treatment program rather yeah. than just like jail. Because that doesn't make things any better for you. But that's me. I'm Daughter of a substance of, abuse counselor. Speaking of jail, not making things any better for you. Um, this next person is uh, up for seven years in prison <sighs> for one of the stupidest Did they things. break a mirror? Cause that's bad luck. No, no armed felon could get seven years in prison after tirade at Brooklyn Dunkin Donuts. Um, now I would like to inform the daily news that this is no, it's no longer Dunkin Donuts. It's just Dunkin. They yeah. they're just because they want to focus on coffee so that they can uh yeah try and compete with Starbucks. Well, whoops. Um a convicted felon's boozy rage over not being able to buy enough pumpkin donuts <laughs> at a Brooklyn donut donuts could land him in jail uh for seven years. Antonio Rosario, 35. Of course, he's a Yankees fan, by the way. <laughs> 
Just saying. Um, Caught with a loaded gun after the feds say he went out of his gourd in a Williamsburg Dunkin' Donuts because employees there couldn't fill his order. One of the store workers described the doughy dispute to a 911 dispatcher, quote, he wants six pumpkin donuts. It's the stupidest thing. He wants six pumpkin donuts. We only have five. So now he's screaming in all our faces, telling us, quote, you're going to fucking make it. Like, when did this happen? Because those are seasonal. I, uh, well, apparently they're just going through the he's finally it's, it's published on the 15th. So it's probably going to court just now. Uh, he pled guilty okay. to a federal well, fire. You're lucky they had any. Yeah. Or they've been sitting there since October and you shouldn't buy them. Pled guilty to a federal firearm charge last week. Fakes a six to seven years in prison. He started shouting at one of the employees. But really, left... over one donut. Over one donut. One specific pumpkin. A donut. Started shouting at one of the employees. Left briefly. Came back and shoved what looked like a weapon in his pants. Led to two terrified employees to call 911. Describing him as intoxicated and possibly armed. <sighs> I, I, it's, it's convicted felon Rosario is barred from having a gun and possessing a firearm as a felon is a federal offense. Yeah, New York, you really can't have guns. They're pretty fucking strict about, this, especially the city. You do not get to walk around packing in New York like, City. I have encountered instances as a customer of an establishment where they have not been able to complete things to my satisfaction. I've got a little red face sometimes and I've left kind of huffy sometimes, but not once have I thought, you know, what's going to solve this? A gun. Because no, it actually won't. That's not how that works. The donut already has a hole in it. Yeah. What and the thing, the... like, you, you could have had five donuts. I understand that you right. wanted six, right. but you could have had five. They probably and if you had... wanted to get a half dozen, you could have just gotten a different flavor a for different the six. Flavor like, of donuts. Instead, instead, you have no donuts, and and you're probably going to fucking Rikers, mm. which is basically the eighth circle of hell what just over dunk donuts you could have just gotten the chocolate frosted this one time like what was that that's was it a i forget it was a denzel was it a denzel film where he held he held up an emergency room because it was, it, they they they, yeah. they were that i could that makes sense to me pulling out a gun it's your kid they want to treat you want to treat your kid sure not a donut not one fucking donut. Admit, those Dunkin' Pumpkin Donuts are fucking legit. <laughs> like, they are easily one of the top tier pumpkin donuts on the market. Oh. But, like, felony worthy? No. Uh, we, got, we got more gun stuff. This is the stupidest. It, the reason why this is so stupid is it made sense in his head, which makes it even that's some of the dumbest shit you will see when someone has convinced themselves of the line of logic that leads them to the stupid thing. Oh, my God. Oh, fuck's sake. Um, man accused of firing gun in I-93 breakdown lane after running out of gas. New Hampshire man is facing several charges after Salem police said he shot a gun in the breakdown lane of I-93 and drove while under the influence. Hmm, pardon me. Richard Rodriguez, uh, 41, of Manchester, was charged with reckless conduct, felonious use of a firearm, driving under the influence. Police said they were called Thursday evening to I-93 North in Salem after witnesses reported that a man was shooting a firearm in the breakdown lane. According to court documents, Rodriguez told officers he was traveling back to Manchester from Massachusetts General Hospital when he ran out of gas. 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 He said he tried calling for help, but no one was responding. Rodriguez told police he fired his gun twice to get someone's attention and get help. That's not going to make anybody stop. For you. 
I wouldn't I wouldn't stop for you. That that is when people speed up. See? Yeah. Cuz you're a guy on the side of the highway with a gun out. It's time that to leave. That doesn't make me want to ask if you're okay cuz clearly you're not. Like Also, I, wasn't Richard Rodriguez the name of a serial killer? I don't know. Like, if you're going to walk around with the name of a serial, if you're going to walk around and your name is Theodore Bundy, don't ask women for help with your groceries. Just, I did. How in did you come to the conclusion that the solution to being out of gas is to pop a couple shots off along the Richard interstate? Ramirez, sorry. Okay, different guy. But yeah. just, what in the entire fuck were you thinking? Like, was your assumption that no one was stopping because they couldn't see you? <laughs> it's not even like a flare gun or anything. It's a gun gun. And by the way, even if you shoot your bullet up in the air. Cool thing you guys might not know about called gravity. Yeah. It's neat. And eventually that it. fucker has to come back down. Yeah. And, it, and will... it will hit something. Yeah. Or someone. Yeah. I... <laughs> Who did you call that? Like, did you call like a friend or something and said they work? You could call someone else. Call yeah. a tow truck. I mean, this is why I have AAA. Right? Shit. It's... They'll tell you 100 miles for free. I have pushed my fucking car before. Okay? Not pulled, decided, okay, my, I, I have no choice. What the hell? Do you, you think you're in the fucking outback? That's the only time it makes sense to fire off a gun to get help is when you're in the middle of, like, the fucking jungle and shit. But don't touch the snakes. Don't touch the snakes, no. Speaking of don't touch the wildlife, how are these people not fucking dead? Oh, you are in so, you, how have, this is the kind of person that you wonder how they made it to adulthood without dying. I tried to tell them to stop. Video shows people yank bear cubs from tree for selfie. Don't do that to the baby bear. State officials in North Carolina are investigating after a group of people were captured on video yanking black bear cubs from a tree to take a selfie. Unsettling scene took place outside an Asheville apartment complex about 3 p.m. Tuesday. Uh, the city is in the western portion of the state near the Tennessee line. It is illegal to disturb a bear den. Um, video tamed by the USA Today Network shows four people, including what appears to be an older woman, trying to grab two black bear cubs perched on a tree branch extending over a short fence to the apartment property. An older man with gray and white hair stands close by in a baseball cap watching the melee and does not intervene. At one point, one of the women successfully gets a hold of one cub and screams in excitement. They're apparently taking pictures holding the cub. An animal shrieking noise is heard, and the bear drops to the ground. Then the cub runs along the inside of the fence and tries to climb it as the woman chases after it. According to a release from the uh, North Carolina Wildlife Resources Commission, a bear cub bit one of the people during the interaction. As he should. You fucking imbeciles! There's like several reasons this is a terrible idea. Oh, one, oh yes. I don't know if bears are one of these animals, but a lot of wildlife, if you touch them like birds, if you find baby birds, they tell you do not handle them because their mother will gen then reject them because they will smell wrong. I don't. Because you will get your stupid human stink all over them and their mother will reject them and then they will die. I don't think that happens with bears. I don't know. But, but I would assume it does. The other for any animal so that I don't fuck up their little animal life. The other thing that happens with bears is 
Mom comes. Mama look, bear. Yes, she left them there for a reason. She's going looking for food. She's coming back. Why would she, she don't come back? It's like you. It's like fucking with a baby tank. For yeah. fuck's sake! And the bear already bit and, your and, ass. And Mama bites harder. I I promise you. I have quite often. Mama's bite is worse. I quite often in the show mentioned that I have seen bears at zoos. If you have not seen a bear at a zoo, it is a humbling fucking experience. It's like a VW bug with a shag carpet and an attitude. They are horrible. The Denver Zoo has one bear, but her, her habitat is so big that she's actually a full story beneath you. Like when they stand full height, they're like 10 to 12 feet tall. I think at least 10 feet tall. They're yeah. big. Eight to, I think it's eight to 10. They're big. They are huge. They'll get, they'll stand they do up. Not like yeah. fucking with, they don't like you fucking with their babies. Like, like, good God. And you already got bitten by who in their, and they made the bear, they made the baby bear cub shriek, which I'm amazed Mama Bear wasn't back sooner. Why in this the is a whole subplot in one of the Jurassic Park movies. They what? had a baby T-Rex with an injured leg and they were trying to draw the Mama T-Rex out of the city. So they like grabbed the baby T-Rex and made it cry. Yeah. Uh, even black bears are at least eight fit, feet on two legs. Yeah, they, they, they will stand up and they will make themselves known. Good. God almighty. How and they are built for murder. You should be dead. You should. I don't know how you made it to adulthood by making these choices. You, I, did you also, roll a natural a 20? Person. Yes, you are a terrible fucking person. That's a baby. You know how scared that baby bear probably was? It's going to grow up and it's going to remember. And you, it's gonna find you. It's gonna fucking find you. Yes. It's gonna be the John Wick of bears. Good God. For there's a, a there's selfie. a trend going around TikTok right now that has men very angry. Some woman posited a question: What would you be more afraid of encountering in the woods, a bear or a man? And almost universally, the women are like a bear, because. Chances are the bear is going to ignore me, but the worst thing the bear will do is kill me, which just break down that sentence for a uh, minute. Yeah. And the men are losing their fucking minds. No, if you it's behave, so if you behave yourself, the bear has no interest in your ass. You're probably safer with the bear. Yeah, they might, you might scare the shit out of you. It might flip out and yeah. hurt you. But generally, if you just like leave it alone, it doesn't care about you. It's a bear. Only when you start fucking with like fucking with its babies. You... How do you exist with no survival instinct whatsoever? You're wandering around the world like a toddler. I feel like toddlers would know not to fuck with a bear. How did you not die before now? I, yeah, I, like who who reminds you to breathe? It's like I I don't know if you've ever seen like those old uh, Looney Tune cartoons with, or or like Baby's Day Out or something, right? It's like the entire world has been Baby's Day Out for these people. Yeah, they had just been suddenly somehow dodging certain stupid death their entire they lives. They just wander on the construction sites and the beams happen to float <laughs> above their heads. <laughs> Well, first thing we learned this week is not everybody who should be dead is dead. It's not a value it's judgment. A harsh lesson, but one everybody has to learn. It's not a value judgment. It is you have somehow done an incredibly stupid thing and lived to tell. You have learned Natural the wrong. Natural selection has indeed failed us. You have learned the wrong lessons. It has reinforced the wrong message. Uh, we have learned that uh, there are many ways of acquiring assistance in our modern world that do not involve firearms. 
I know yeah. I was surprised as well. <laughs> We've also learned that firearms are not a way for more efficient customer service. Because if you go in there and demanding a six donut with a gun, you're going to end up with seven years. That's how that works. Um, we have not learned six donuts, no, seven, seven years. years. We have learned that um, methamphetamine does not have a better business bureau. <laughs> there is there is there is no return policy. You're you're not going to go to small claims court because they gave you a bad batch. What the hell? Can you imagine that episode of Judge Judy? She'd just be the whole time. Or whoever like, the TV judges this year. I don't like TV judges change, I know. But like, whoever like the people's court is now, like. Just the whole time, just like, oh. <laughs> it's like, I went to law school for this. <laughs> uh, we have learned that Taping a lottery ticket together, number one, is not going to work, and number two, is incredibly illegal. So illegal. Totally 100% illegal. And finally, we've learned you don't need to bring the snake with you to the hospital. It, they'll, they've got this. You don't need to go, look, this is the one that bit me. I mean, I did not know that there was such a thing as like an anti venom anti venom identification kit. Yeah. So that it that was a good bit of education for me. I probably wouldn't have fucked with the snake to try and bring it with. Me. His dick. I would figure I could just describe it, maybe. Esther, get the Tupperware. I done got bit again. 